occupation will have uh, disrupted sleep from coal mining and fracking. Um, in Cambridge, we are a world-class city. We are famous for our innovation, and we have the ability to take technology and use it so that uh, we have a both a vibrant city and a city in which uh, the well-being of the citizens is given a, a primary role. So uh, with that, um, I have some slides for you. Um, they are designed specifically to reflect this town, so uh, some of these things you may actually recognize. Um, but not this Luna Moth. Uh, I chose this Luna Moth to say that we are stewards not only of the human citizens of this town, but in fact all the living things. And that means the, the plants and the animals, uh, all of us, all of us evolved in relationship to light. And in terms of, uh, in terms of human beings, and uh, some of you may, at the end of this uh, talk, feel that you're not getting the sleep that you need, and if you need some support for that, you know how to find me. Um, there, are, there are really two major processes that regulate human sleep. The first we call the homeostatic drive for sleep, and that's essentially how long have you been up. The longer you're up, the tired you're gonna be, right? We've all done that. In the old days, we used to pull these uh, all-nighters and think we could get away with it. We're getting to the point maybe where that's a little bit harder. Sometimes we still try. And one of the things we notice when we've done that is in the morning, when the sun is back out, we feel more alert, even though we've been up all night. Then as the day proceeds, we start to fade again. There's a reason for that. And that reason is that, in part, we are run by light. So that's why in the bottom, you see the circadian drive for wakefulness. Now, recognize this is Cambridge. You see what the clock says, 24, 24, 24. The lifestyle in Cambridge, which some of us partake in, 24-7 light and technology, cafe on every corner, insufficient exercise, limited sleep. Some of these things are by choice. Some of them are not. So here are the, some of the things that we can do if we want to improve our sleep. Our exercise and activity levels are going to influence our sleep. Obviously, our, our sleep schedule, the more consistent, the better our body likes it. Who we sleep with. Um, what we do about caffeine, alcohol, medicines over the counter as well as prescription. Alcohol, by the way, while it has an immediate sedative effect, produces re rebound insomnia. So if you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you don't know why, think about if you drank before you went to sleep. Anxiety is not helpful. Age, gender, and genetics, not so easy to do something about. Although in Cambridge, some of us try to do something about our gender. Cultural norms, social context, and lifestyle. Now keep that in mind because you are in part responsible for the cultural norms, social context, and lifestyle of the citizens of this city. Light and circadian drive. We like to believe we have some control over this, but we don't necessarily have the kind of control we wish we had. And let me give you a personal example. Behind my home in the Cambridge Historic District is an eight-story building with security lighting blaring into my house. Um, I do what I can, even though I can read the newspaper at night with all the lights out in my house. Um, my, my biggest concern about this lighting is a safety issue. I have had a guest in my driveway walking toward my door when another guest pulled in in their car. The light was so bright, it blinded the person pulling in. They could have killed the chief of medicine who luckily jumped out of the way. Now, I wrote to the management of the condo, I wrote to every owner of a condo in that building, and I begged the city for help, and, I, and nothing could or was done about this problem. It remains that way. When the leaves fall back off the trees, I have a dangerous situation in my house. So, Limited sleep increases appetite and lowers satiation. Again, brand new on Mount Auburn Street. Um, my understanding is they deliver until three o'clock in the morning, and we need that, right? Because at three o'clock in the morning, if you're still up, something is happening to you. 
there's an imbalance in your hormones at this point. Your body thinks you're having an emergency. It's making, it's increasing your appetite and lowering your satiation. So what that means is you're going to want those cookies. And you're going to be miscued. If you're busy, you're going to eat instead of going to sleep. Now, the whole country is full of people that do this. The, the amount of sleep that Americans are getting has gone down about two hours a night since the 50s. At the same time, we have an obesity crisis. Interesting. So here are some of the things that happen when you have insufficient or disordered sleep. Impaired attention and reaction time, decreased memory and concentration. It gets worse. Uh, depression, impaired task completion, psychosocial difficulties. In fact, decreased helping behavior, increased tendency toward violence, risk of injuries and falls, increased report of pain. Inflammation, in fact, goes up when you haven't slept. Weight gain, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. If you don't sleep after getting a flu shot, your flu shot doesn't have the same impact in terms of development of antibodies. So if you're getting a flu shot, sleep afterwards. So here you see what I was talking about earlier. Here we have the overweight and obese in the United States. And if you look at that graph, it's going up. And we have a reciprocal graph on the bottom, mean sleep duration dropping, dropping, dropping. Pretty stunning, wouldn't you say? Intersecting epidemics. So look at the country. Obesity, diabetes, and insufficient sleep. This comes from the CDC. So I'm here then to ask you, if you have the opportunity to upgrade our lighting ordinance, so that people do not have to experience intrusive light in their homes. Wouldn't you want to do that? I hope you will. Thank you.